Hey there guys, uh, we are here today to learn about drawing something called a free body diagram. So by the end of this video, I hope you understand what a free body diagram is and that you can use it to actually look at and analyze forces that act on an object. So let's start off kind of at the beginning, um, or what I might define as the beginning, and let's talk about what a force actually is. I think to truly understand and be able to draw a free body diagram, you have to understand what a force is to begin with. So forces occur when there's a push or a pull. And the important thing to remember about forces here is that it is resulting from the interaction of two objects. So this all comes down to Newton's, Newton's laws. Forces interact um, due to, to two objects. It's never less than two. It's never more than two. So any given force is only due to the result of an interaction of two objects. So before we actually go on and actually show you what a free body diagram is, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some important things to remember here. Now, this video is not going to cover anything on net force equations. We're going to come back to these ideas later in another video. But a free body diagram, uh, and I do abbreviate this here, uh, FBD, is always going to be drawn with all the forces that act on the object, Okay, even if those forces won't be used to solve the problem. It's just a good habit to get yourself into thinking about you know, what forces act on an object. You never know when these forces that you don't think are important actually become important. Um, when we actually go to solve things, uh, we often need to define a positive direction. And typically what we do here is we use the, use the direction of the acceleration kind of as the key for uh, the direction of, that we call positive. OK, so next I'd like to uh, introduce something that I like to call on by notation. And on by notation, again, emphasizes this idea that I said or a little bit ago. Let me bring it back in here. That a force is a push or pull resulting um, due to the interaction of two objects. You'll notice here that the on and by, this is the object that the force is acting on. And then this is the force that this is the what the force is due to or what it's by. So let's, let's look at an example. I'm going to bring in uh, an example here. Let's suppose that we have a crudely drawn hand throwing a baseball. And uh, in fact, let's just have the ball being held in this hand at the moment. So I want to know a little bit about the forces that act on this ball. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it over here. And we're going to draw a free body diagram for this for this object. So basically, when I do a free body diagram, I want to ask myself this. If I were this ball, what would I feel? What forces act on me? What objects interact with me? So hopefully it's, it's pretty obvious, first of all, that you're going to feel the hand pushing on you. Now the hand exerts an upwards force um, on you if you are the ball. And in my notation, uh, let me just bring this over real quick here. This would be what I would call a force on the ball, and it's due to the hand. If it wasn't for this upwards force that the hand exerts on you as the ball, you're going to fall. So notice again, this is a force on the ball, and it's due to or it's by the hand. So again, something else you want to ask yourself. If you are the ball, do you feel any other forces? And hopefully, again, the answer is, is obvious here. But you're also going to feel a downwards force. Now, this downwards force is a force that we often call uh, gravity. Now, what is gravity actually caused by? Well, gravity is actually caused by, by the Earth. It pulls down. And so the Earth has an attraction for uh, all objects that are near it, and it, has, it is no different from this ball uh, than it is for you. So the, the ball also feels a downwards force 
due to or by the earth. So this is a completed um, free body diagram for our ball being held in the hand, um, uh, this ball being held in this hand. So I guess one other thing I should mention here um, while talking about the, um, the free body diagram is we should always concern ourselves with acceleration as well. And in this particular case, since the ball is being held there, it's not changing its velocity in any way. It, is, uh, it has an acceleration of 0 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's, let's change the situation around a little bit here. Um, let's say instead of this time, instead of the ball being just held here in the hand, let's say that instead what this hand actually does is it takes the ball and it gives it a little toss up in the air. So in this case, um, the, the hand is actually pushing up on the ball, causing it to accelerate in an upwards direction. And we're concerned about the time during which the ball is still in contact with the hand. So the ball hasn't actually, the ball hasn't actually left the hand and has gone flying up here. It's the time during which these two things are still in contact. So let's go ahead and let's, um, I'm going to just copy the original thing over here. Uh, one of the first things I want you to think about here is the acceleration. Uh, originally, our acceleration was zero. Is that the case this time? Now, clearly, I hope you can see that if this ball is going to be moving upwards, and not only moving upwards, but getting faster in an upwards direction, that our acceleration is actually also going to be in an upwards direction as well. So I've indicated that here with uh, the acceleration as being an upwards arrow. Now again, to draw my free body diagram, I still ask myself the same two questions. Does the ball still get pulled down by the earth while the hand's pushing up? Absolutely. Does the hand push up on the ball as the ball's being thrown up in the air? Absolutely. Now one thing that um, I want to kind of point out here is that I should draw this force just to get an idea of how this all works out, this force right here in the upwards direction has to be larger than the downwards force. This unbalanced force is what causes this acceleration to actually occur. And I guess I actually failed to mention that in my original drawing. The reason that there's no acceleration up here is because this force upwards is balanced out by this force down. If this force upwards is, I don't know, let's say one newton, this downwards force here has to be one newton in a downwards direction. So down here in our second example, where we have this hand pushing up on the ball, causing it to accelerate up, we have to have a larger force pushing upwards than we do pulling downwards. So again, if this ball has, um, if the earth has an attraction of one newton down, then the force upwards has to be greater than that. How much greater? Well, it, it's going to depend on the, uh, the acceleration that we have here. So to finish off this, uh, this video here, I'd like to let you with, with some couple, couple free body diagrams to practice. So I have here, um, you have a, a box on the rest of the table, so its acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. We have a box, I guess it's being pushed across a frictionless table, so there's no friction holding this thing back. It accelerates to the right. We have a box that's accelerating, um, it's attached to some rope. This is a rope here at the top. It's accelerating downwards. And I guess we could have the same box. It's now accelerating upwards. And again, it's um, on the rope here as well. So I'd like you to go ahead and give these a try. Stop the video here. Pick up with me once you've, after you've uh, actually done these. All right, so here we are. Um, our first example was a box sitting on a table. There's no acceleration, so therefore these two forces, the upwards and the downwards, must actually uh, be in what we call equilibrium. In other words, they're equal to one another. This one up has to be equal to this one down. Uh, so again, it's a force on the box due to the earth pulling it down. We have a force on the box due to the table pushing it up. Don't really worry too much about um, my notation here. Um, we'll talk a little bit about more about this later. So our second example was an object that's accelerating to the right. 
Um, again, basically in this case, the up and down forces still balance out because there is no acceleration in any kind of upwards or downwards direction. It's simply to the right. So there's only one additional force, and um, that's this applied force due to this hand, and it's pushing it to the right. According to the, according to the way the problem was stated, there was supposed to be no, um, no friction, so nothing holding it back. So therefore, it's only this, this one force pushing to the, uh, to the right. We, our next one, uh, next example here. We had a force, uh, or a box being accelerated downwards. So there's our acceleration arrow right here. We have a force pulling downwards on the box, and um, that's the Earth that's pulled it down. That's sometimes known as the force of gravity. We also have a tension force pulling it up. That's due to the rope. And notice here, again, or at least what I'm trying to show, is that this downwards force is greater than this upwards force. The length of this vector, the length of this force vector, is actually larger than right up here. And lastly, we have this box being accelerated upwards. Uh, it has a, an acceleration arrow upwards right here. We have the rope, the force on the box due to the rope, pulling it up. And we have the gravity once again pulling it down. The fact that it's accelerating upwards uh, means that this upwards force has to be greater than this downwards force. And again, I'm trying to show that by showing this arrow, this force vector arrow, as a larger force. So just want to leave you with the ideas that a free body diagram is when we isolate the object that we're concerned about, we take a look and we ask ourselves what's happening to it, what forces are acting on it, and we draw all the forces that act on it. When we go to actually solve this, it's very convenient to actually set the positive direction in the same direction as the acceleration. And as you'll see, when we move into these things called net force equations, this will make our life a lot easier. But that's for another video, for another time.